Today we're going to talk about the greatest show on earth. Now, and some of you in the West are going to think the St. Louis Rams and Kurt Warner. No, not that greatest show on earth. That's American football. This was the greatest show on earth, or at least they called themselves the greatest show on earth. So, we're going to start episode two and we're going to go right into this. Let's give it a go. What's the first picture we have here? See if you can see what we're, our topic is, what the greatest show on earth is. Some of you may have seen this before. Can anybody tell me what this is? Yeah. This is a company that was recently, they just closed, I believe in 2017. They were called Ringling Bros, but the mother company or the foundation was a very, very famous company called Barnum and Bailey. And they were called the greatest show on earth. And it was the circus. So today we're going to talk about the circus, how it began, where it began, how it evolved over the years, the different acts that they have in the shows, and a little bit about where it is today. All right. So let's take a look at their next picture here. All right, so these are some of the performers that would do their acts. Some of them would be hanging from, they're called trapeze. Some of them are working on high wires, all kinds of different things. Does anybody have any idea what we call these performers? And I'm curious if anyone has been to a circus before. If you have, please let me know. I'd like to know where you, you went to a circus. Now don't confuse a carnival or a, do they call it a fair? Yeah, I guess they call it a fair now. We used to call it a festival. There was a, a Shidiac festival that I used to go to every summer in my hometown in Canada. There was no circus there, but they had all kinds of amusement rides, like the, the, the big wheel, the, the, Ferris wheel they called it and bumper cars and there was a really scary one called the zipper and it would go up and spin and spin and spin and people would get dizzy and most people were afraid to get on that one. Does anyone know what we call these performers in a circus? Circus is always a lot more live entertain entertainment with the performers and artists and they have different acts and they have animals. All right, this one is acrobats. These guys are called acrobats and they do acrobatics. Like all kinds of stunts and dangerous things. You wouldn't want to try these at home. You want to make sure you're in a very safe place like a gymnasium where you have a trainer, someone who knows what they're doing that can support you or spot you to try these acts. Acrobat or Acrobats. All right. Pretty amazing. Wow. Next. Yeah, probably the most famous character or artist. These guys are famous for not only entertaining people, making them laugh, but most of them as well have a lot of skill sets where they can do acrobats and, and do some gymnastics. A lot of incredible historic guys like this. And this one is an easy one. You should know this one. Someone should know this one. You see them sometimes they get hired to, to entertain at birthday parties for children and stuff as well. They are very well liked around the world. There's even an organization in England, I believe is where it started, called Red Nose Day, where actors and these people will come into hospitals where children are being taken care of and come in to entertain them and make them laugh and make them feel better. So they're very important for a lot of young, young guys. What are these guys called? Yeah, that's right. Clown. This is a clown. These are clowns. Yeah, clowns. 
probably the most famous of all the circuses, the clown. All right, let's move on to the next one. Okay, now, when I was very young, because I barely remember going, but I do remember a circus came to town and my mother brought me to the circus. Like I said, I was very young. I don't remember much at all. But I remember one thing. This was what I wanted to see the most. The men and women that swing into the air and do a somersault and then catch each other with their hands and bring them back to the other side. I couldn't find a really good video showing some of these acts, unfortunately, because it is truly acrobatic and truly amazing where they would flip and other people would catch them and then flip them again and someone else would catch them and it's like, what are these people doing flying around in the sky jumping off these wires and catching each other? It's incredible to watch. Incredible to watch. Does anyone know what we call these artists? They are acrobats, but this specific, specific act is called trapeze, trapeze act. And these are the ones that swing around up there. Um, and I know that in some circuses, to make the show more entertaining, they didn't even use a safety net. So that would have been very scary. But it would have got your attention, I'm sure. So now, of course, when they do these stunts, it's all, it's quite safe, you know. Some of them even have safety harnesses for ropes. But usually they have a net underneath in case someone did fall. Pretty amazing. Trap. Peas are acts. Acts. Incredible stuff. Next. All right. Another thing that circuses are very, very famous for are the animal entertainers, the animal acts. Um, and you're going to see lots of animals like the elephants. Um, of course, they have dogs as well, because dogs can do many, many, tri many tricks um, when they're doing this. But you have the elephants, you also have lion and tiger tamer, tame, tame, tamer, not tamers, trainers, I'm sorry. Animal trainers that work with these animals. So there's even some that have sea lions, the seals that you see, the sea lions doing different acts. What other animals can I think of? Horses, lots of horses and ponies. Mm. Some of these animals, I'm sure, are very difficult to train. But the elephant is definitely a famous, famous animal for the circus. Yes. Matt, uh, you need to say circus animals. Circus animals, exactly. And that's exactly what they are, circus animals. But we were looking for trained animals, right? There's your trainer and these animals dancing elephants. Not too often you're going to see that. And he dances too. <laughs> I get a kick out of the dog here. How he keeps spinning around on the floor but the dog just keeps walking all over him everywhere not touching the ground like there's something bad. But that's pretty cool. That's really cool. And of course you have the tiger trainers. All right. So yes, our circus animals, there are lots of them. Mm. Another one that is very famous in circuses, circus and circuses. Uh, you see these performers outside of the circus quite often as well. There's that famous um, fella from France, and I forgot his name, um, that did this walk across the World Trade Centers before they came down and uh, that's that's pretty amazing and she's pretty well balanced as well she's like dancing on the rope what do we call these people that balance themselves and walk on these on these these what what do they call them and as well as I did the research on this and, and we did uh, all our, our videos, 
there are a lot of different kinds of performances like this. It's not just one name. There, there's, I can't explain it because I'll give you the word. <laughs> but there's a lot of different kinds. Um, so it's not just one, one act. Does anyone Gappy. know what that? Gappy. Rope. Yeah, that's right, Gappy. Tight rope walker. This one's pretty tight, but you see this one's pretty slack. It's not as tight. You can move it around a little bit more. Some of the video footage that we received or got for uh, tight ropes was also really loose ropes, which really difficult. One person was walking up and sliding as they were trying to walk up. So there's a lot of different types of tight ropes and they're called different things, but we went with the most popular for now, for today. So again, this is another act in the circus uh, and circuses that is very popular and very common. Next. All right, so now we have got, oh my God. What do we call these guys? Sometimes they're riding bicycles and they're doing this. Sometimes they're walking on the tightrope and doing this. What do we call these guys? Sometimes the clowns are doing it, of course. It might be difficult doing it when you're running around. And this is a hard one to pronunciate. Pronunciate. Juggler. Yeah, jugglers. Later in the show, if you're still here, I'll juggle for you. But not yet, not yet. Gotta hang around a little bit. Jugglers, yeah. English for you. Hello, Mr. Trevor. English for you is back. Welcome back again. Thank you for coming. Juggler or jugglers. This one is the g sound. And again, you got your z. Jugglers. All right. So, more circus performers. What else do we have for circus performers and acts? Ah, yeah. Now, mind you, in recent years, recent years meaning, you know, probably the last 50 years or so, maybe up to maybe even up to 100 years, often the circuses that travel will perform like in an arena, like a basketball arena, hockey arena, something like that. But it wasn't always the case. We didn't have arenas or small stadiums um, in the beginning. And the first, first circus, which we're going to talk about a little later in the reading, uh, was around 1,500 years ago. So most of them, in the beginning, they were outdoors, of course, but then a lot of them, as they started traveling in the modern days, in the 1700s and 1800s, uh, 1800s and 1900s, they used to make these huge tents. It was a lot easier. You needed a big area for people to sit inside and have what is, well, what is called a ring, which is the circle in the middle where the performers can do the show. And they also needed all these supports. As you can see, see this one is an old style one here. You have a couple of poles here. That way you could hang all your ropes and your trapeze and all the different things that needed to be done. But of course here is a big stage um, and a lot of support and steel wires. So they, these were called, I can see it up here as well. This was your traditional Tent. Yeah. Mat. Also, it's the same. It is a circus tent, but there's a special word for it. They call it something else. Oh, she said that uh, big top? Yeah, big top. That's exactly what they call it. They call it a big top. That's what the people in the circus business call it a big top. Big top. And exactly, it is a circus tent but it would be a lot easier to take this apart and bring it with you than have to find buildings all the time. So it'd be a lot easier at that time. Now it's probably better just to rent space in an arena. All right, good. 
What do we have behind the curtain this time? Aha! This reminds me of someone who used to work with us. It was Mr. Marvins. Some of you know Marvins or remember Marvins. He did this for a lot of the students here at our Halloween. Um, we did a trick or treat where all the kids went down the street. We had what, two, three hundred kids all dressed up going trick or treating at Halloween. And all the teachers were dressed up in all kinds of costumes. And Marvins, who's from the Philippines, used to do this. And he was, his makeup, his costume was a zombie and he was on the side of the street doing this with fire everywhere. So it got a lot of attention, for sure. Hello Marvins, if you're out there. What do we call these guys? There's a couple of things too. Actually, the, the research we had was a, was a different name, but there's two of them. There are some that take fire and put it out in their mouth or take the fire away from these torches. Yeah, torches. So an easy one is, what is it when you take the air in and exhale the air? What is that verb called? What is that action? for you. Blow? Well, blow is like when you have a cake and you have all your candles and <sighs> huff and puff and blow your house down. Yeah. Gappy, gappy, breathing. Gappy, yes, good one. Breathing, so put it together. Oh, fine, breathing. Yeah, fire breather or fire breathing. Which is when they blow out, I guess you could say blow now. This is how Marvin's and them did it. They usually hold the, the fuel, I think it was gasoline from a car. <laughs> gasoline from a car, I believe it was, that he was using. It's pretty, not, doesn't taste very well. But anyhow, that's what they would do. They would use the fire and then blow that out. It would make these huge flames of fire. Um, and then some performers that are really good with this, they actually put the fires out in their mouth and different. It's, it's very entertaining to watch. I was in Cambodia one time. Not, yeah, yeah, Cambodia for New Year's Eve. And we were down on the South Beach area, the tourist area. And that evening we were sitting on the beach and I guess that would be, I guess that's the Indian Ocean, yeah. No, 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 Cambodia, we're still on the... <laughs> I'm supposed to know geography. We're still in the South China, it's not the China Sea, I forget what they call it there. But anyway, south of Cambodia, we were there and they had dozens, dozens, mean 12, like a dozen eggs, dozen, dozens of fire breathers and they were juggling fire and twirling fire and breathing fire all on the beach. It was really beautiful, it was very nice. It's a great show. I have to get Marvis to come back for Halloween again. All right, what do we got next? What else can we find at a, in a circus or at a circus? Some of these videos are old. A lot of this is not allowed anymore. So we'll talk about a little bit about that later. But this guy, I don't know what he is. If he's, I, I don't know if he's a chimpanzee or what he is, but nonetheless, he can certainly do a lot of, what can he do? Does a lot of things and he's juggling a cat at the same time. Hmm. See, sometimes technical difficulties. All right, so he's playing the violin, he's balancing on a ball, he's balancing a cat, he's walking on his hands, he's doing all kinds of things. We call them tricks. Okay, let's go to the next one. All right, here is where, it's where some people start having problems. Where is the bear and where is the elephant? The bear and the elephant, where are they? It's not actually a jail or a prison. So what would we call an animal or a person that is put behind bars? I'm not looking for prisoner, even technically it's kind of like that, but there's another word for it and it's about the name of this contraption, this, this structure 
There's a word for this. Caged. Yeah. These are caged animals. And this was, is kind of the, has been some of the problems with circuses. Um, obviously, they travel a lot and they have, they have big trucks, lorries, transports. So they have very small cages and bears and tigers and lions and elephants and all of these uh, animals, unfortunately, end up spending their day in a cage. And the cages are very small. It's not as big as the zoo. So this has been a big problem for the animals. So let's move on again. All right. This is kind of fun. I did this when I was a kid. We had some at school. A little bit awkward at first, but when you get used to it, it's not too bad. It's not as hard as it looks. Now, I never tried juggling when I was doing this. I was a lot more focused on holding everything in the right place. But what do we call these long poles or sticks that clowns, performers use to walk around and make them like 12 feet tall or six meters tall or five meters tall? Does anyone know what we call these? You see a lot of this too in the circus. We already have juggling. Now, probably not. It's not something that we say very often. They're called stilts. Oh, yeah. They're called Happy. stilts. Stick thingy. <laughs> stick thingies? Yes. They're stick thingies, all right. But they're not called stick thingies. <laughs> Stick thing is, is when you don't really know what it is. All right, stilts is what they call them. So you see a lot of people on stilts as well at the circus. And what else have we got? We also have... Uh, well, we do. Looks like we have some new people from South Korea, Japan today, mm -hmm. Taiwan, Russia. A lot of new, uh, a lot of new viewers. Mm -hmm. All right. Cage for the previous one. Yeah, caged. A cage. It is a caged. And now the adjective, the animals, Caged animals is correct. Now this one is very difficult. I have tried this as well. Not very successfully, but I have tried. Now I'll give you a clue. Right? If you have two wheels, it's a bicycle. Bi means two. Now if you had three wheels, it's called a tricycle. Tricycle. So what's that word for one? Cycle. What do we call this? Very difficult to ride. And of course it's ride because we get on top, we don't steer it. it. Takes a lot of balance. And some of them do these sickles on high wires. But notice how this wire is very, 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 very solid. It doesn't have too much flex. Anybody get that one? Uni. Uni means one, bi means two, tri means three. Unicycle, bicycle, tricycle. And if it's got four wheels, it's a little different. It's called a quad. Mm -hmm. All right, unicycle, yeah. Guppy, is it um, one cycle? A oh, one cycle? <laughs> Guppy said that uh, he tried this and he almost fell. <laughs> you almost? You didn't fall? All right, so unicycle. What's the next act or something that we would see? Ah, this one. This one is very dangerous. Hmm. I've seen it on TV, of course. Um, it is incredible. Unfortunately, we couldn't find any um, copyright videos to show. So we only had this one picture. But basically, these people, these, these performers, they take these long swords. Remember, we did swords in, in a couple of live streams before. I think we did. Did we? That's probably a classroom. These are swords. And they can slide these swords all the way down their throat into their chests. it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, they don't eat it, they don't consume it. That means that they keep it. <laughs> uh, they do take it back out, which is probably a very good thing. 
And you, I did see a person eat glass before, and that, that's, that's pretty scary too. But these guys are amazing. You don't see them too often. But to be able to straighten their, their throat, their windpipe, and align themselves like this, wow, incredible. Then that's slow and short. And by the way, <laughs> a wave, maybe it's a little bit hard for me to pronounce his name. He said that just call me Ken. <laughs> yeah, I knew so. it was Ken. I just didn't want to say Ken yet. Mm -hmm. How you doing, Ken? <laughs> Ken used to work with us. Well, we used to work, I forget the name of the place, but we worked together in Jakarta quite a while ago and I know that you went back to Chile for a while Chile welcome to New Way English and English with Trevor <laughs> it's a text me later all right so anybody get this one yet um, sword swallow swallower yes yeah. sword swallowing sword swallowing or he would be he or she would be called a sword swallower they can actually take it so far like that. That's fun. Ken, tell us what time it is in Chile. I'm guessing it's got to be six or seven in the morning. Pretty much 12 hours difference or pretty close to that. Maybe less. Sword swallows. Sword. Okay. Ord. Sword. There's almost like no W here. Sword. Swallow, swallowing, swallower. Yeah, to swallow. <coughs> all right. All right, what do we got next? These are all some of the people that we would, the performers we would see at a circus. Now we're getting back to the history of when and how it started. Now, you wouldn't see this as often or too often in a circus nowadays, these days. But when it first started, and we're going to read about that in, in um, the, Roman, the Roman Emperor, the Roman Empire period, which again is like the sixth, fifth and sixth century AD after Christ. And in the beginning, they used to have a lot of horse races like this. But there's a word for these, and we're looking for this. It's famous for the Romans. Uh, the soldiers used to use them, and they used them for entertaining. Anybody got it? By the way, Ken, <laughs> you do an amazing job. Congrats. <laughs> well, thank you, Ken. I appreciate it very much. <laughs> you have to come and join us. We'll get online, do some teaching together. We can do it, no problem. All right, so does anybody know what these are called? I'll give you the second word. Of course, it's races, a race, races. But what are these called? Very famous for the old Roman era times. So I'll give you a minute to think about that. Um, as we'll read after, we're gonna talk about how the circus began and where it began. And it started in a place just outside of Rome again back in I think the sixth century so these are the 500s if you remember your centuries every 100 years and they used to have these races and then they would also and I'm not going to give you the word because there's a picture coming and it's fake like a reenactment of battles and wars and fights that happened in those days for entertainment um, the Romans used to call it bread and, oh, what is that again? <laughs> that famous saying again, bread and bread and bread and what? Oh my God, it'll come to me. I'm nervous. <laughs> By the way, can just say that it's 9.45 a.m. <laughs> He's making breakfast. <laughs> 9.45. Oh, I'm hungry too. I'm going to some bacon and eggs right now. 9.45 in Chile. Okay, you're still in Chile. Um, All right. Gappy horse riding. I guess this horse. All right. Well, Gappy, I already said it's racing, number one. That's the second word. And is he sitting on the horse? He's not sitting on the horse. So how can he be riding the horse? He's back here in a... What? Chariot racing. Chariot. Yeah. 
chariot races, chariot racing. This was very popular back in the Roman times and it was quite entertaining. Oh my God, why do I forget that word? Bread and, it's not bread and circus, bread and, bread and entertainment. Bread and circus, that's what it was? Bread and circus, yeah, okay. And what the idea was that a lot of people uh, had hard times, of course, you know, the Ro especially the Romans. And the Romans is another story altogether, just like Genghis Khan. And one of these days, we'll go through the Punic Wars and Hannibal Barca and all these legendary uh, characters and people from the past. But for the purpose of the circus, according to all our research, it began in just out, well, in Rome, but just outside. Um, so again, at that time, they had chariot races, they had, uh, and I'm not gonna give you the word, but like, I almost gave it to you, fake battles to entertain the crowds. And they also had animals come in for entertainment, which was very popular then too. Uh, and it's back in the gladiator times. I know you, most of you will know gladiators, yeah. The um, bread and circus is what they called it. And the reason, uh, and I, we didn't go into that here, but I'll say it now. Bread and circus meant the emperor would say that as long as we give the people bread for free and we give them circus entertainment, they'll be happy and they won't complain that they're poor. So that's where the statement comes from and you'll probably hear it again in the future. All right, so what else did we have in the past? How did this all start? Ah, this is the one now. You had what we talked about at the circus, you have the ring, right? The ring is the area where the performers do their show. So this all started back in the Roman times when you had the battles and, and well, I guess the gladiators were real battles, but then in circus times, there was also fake ones where there were reenactments, I mean, playing or like acting of certain things that happened throughout their history, our history. But what do we call this? If it's not real, it's not, or it's fake, there's a word for that. When we recreate it, it was planned. Matt, arena? It is an arena. It is an arena. The circle is kind of like the, an arena, but especially in Roman times, they would call it the arena. The famous one is the Colosseum, but some refer to it as the arena, which is the part where they actually have the combat. It's all fake. It's not real. He's, he's fine. He's, he's going to go eat his cookies and drink his milk after. Don't worry. He's fine. He's getting paid. Battles. They are. They're called stage battles. Staged, yeah? Staged. Staged battles. It's not the stage that we stand on to perform. These ones are staged, meaning they're like theater. Um, I think it actually probably connected the root of where the word comes from. But staged means planned, created, acted. Re-enactment. Okay. So, he's fine. This is just rubber. It's not real. See? He's fine. It's like, ah, day's finally over. Now I can go eat my cookies. All right. What do we got next here? Let's pull the curtains back again. This was Queen's idea on the curtains and everything. Oh, that's pretty cool. Queen's pretty good. She's getting better. So is Chang. Sometimes. <laughs> you can't go to the circus. You can't go to the movies. You can't relax. You can't watch entertainment without this. And I love this. So, I know some of you know what this is because it's probably the greatest invention in the world. I think so. Matt. Wow, popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> Matt popcorn. Yes, Trevor loves popcorn and popcorn loves Trevor. For sure. Yes, cannot go to the movies, cannot go to a show. Yeah, have to have popcorn. It's just a must. Popcorn. Yeah. I wonder if they had popcorn 1,500 years ago. 
I had corn, but I don't know if they had popcorn. That's it. Next week, the history of popcorn. That's our show. Where it came from and who was the first one that figured out how to go pop and make this beautiful, amazing invention. No, I'm just kidding. If all goes well, next week is going to be the history of video games. The advantages and disadvantages. So I think a lot of you will like that one. All right. You guys got my popcorn ready for after the show? Where's my popcorn? Yep, yeah, I got my popcorn ready. Okay, so I said before we do our reading, if you're there, I promised a couple of you in the class that I would actually try to juggle. Now, I've never done this before in my life. Never, 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 never. Until three hours ago, and I tried 20 times, and I didn't succeed once. No, I'm lying. But anyhow, I promised I would try. So, um, um, see how this goes. <clears throat> Silence, please. Everybody, quiet. I knew if I tried it twice, I'd mess it up. That's it. But I did it. I have proof. I have it. That's it. Shh. Shh. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I'm proud of myself now. <laughs> All right. Let's go through our vocab again. Our biggest viewership is Vietnam still. And I thank all of you. Don't get me wrong. Um, that's why when we do the vocab slides, we just put the phonics in there. And as we keep setting the YouTubes, as we edit these videos and put them on YouTube, then you'll be able to get all of the subtitles in your languages. All right, so let's go through these words real quick. Sir, don't forget your R, of course. Now remember, I'm, I speak North American English. Many refer to it as American English accent. Um, and I've told all of our students before, and I'm telling you now, don't worry so much about your accent. You don't have to try to sound American or sound British or have a Texas accent or, or worry about the accents in Australia or, I mean, look at the Philippines, for example lots of really strong English speakers but there's an accent right there's lots of great English speakers in China in Japan in, in Vietnam everywhere everybody has an accent from either from where they're from or if it's a second language of course you're gonna have an accent don't worry about the accents just worry about communicating making your pronunciation clear okay so don't worry about it if you're British, you probably won't stress the R as much. Circus. I say circus. I, I do because that's my accent. Don't worry about it. Circus. Acrobat. Don't forget your TS. Start with the T, finish with the S. Acrobat. No T. Turn it in, put the tongue up, turn it into an S. Not acrobass. Acrobat. Now here, all of you, clow. Look at the clow, clow, clow. What? What's a clow? Clown. Mm -hmm. Clown. Trapeze. Train. Go to the end. Trained. Trained. Past tense. Trained animals. Type. And again, go to that T position, not tie rope. Tie rope you find in Thailand. Tight rope, tight rope. You gotta put the T position. Walker, tight rope walker. All right, what do we got next here? Come on, curtain. There we go. Jug, g -g. juggler, jugglers. And that tent and the circus, we call it. A big, big top, big top, fire. It's just like as if it was F-I-E-R, 
fire breathing breather trick k -k tricks tricks caged now this is not the g this is your zh sound but you have to imagine your d is in here all right go to the d position cad but don't say the d cage cage caged caged Jd. difficult i know but i'm here to help you i'm trying caged and these, which you can make at home and freak out your neighbors and your parents and walk in the house and be like six meters tall. Hey, mom! Hey, dad! Hey, look how tall I am! You can. It's really easy. Just need a couple of pieces of sticky thingies, as Gappy said. Sticky thingies. And you can do it. No problem. Still. Stay still. Still. T again. Still. T -t -t. Still. T -t. Still. Stilts is what they're called, not sticky things. Sticky things are, and your fingers are all stuck together after eating candy. That, that's sticky things. Like some of our students. Sticky things. Unicycle. Uni means one, which doesn't explain why they call it university. Bicycle. Bi means two, but that doesn't explain biology. And tricycle, but I can't think of another try something. Tricycle, tripod, three legs, means three. Sword, or that O-R, right? O and R. Or, or, ord. So we don't pronounce the W, we just go to the S, not SH. Sword. And back in the Roman times, chariot. Chariot, and I've heard some say chariot. I think chariot is how I know it best. And CE is always an S sound, so race. But when we're talking in the plural, it turns into an is. Races, just like face. Faces, okay. Place, places. It's like an IZ sound at the end here. Staged. Again, like a D. Stage, staged, staged. Battles. Z -z. <laughs> of course, the best invention in the world. Popcorn! I love my popcorn. Next. All right, so we did all the vocabulary for you to know what we're going to talk about and read about. So now I'm going to read you three short little passages, well, pretty short, as we always do. And then we'll have some questions for you. So first time, of course, we're going to read through it a little slowly and I'll give some explanation. And then I'll read it at normal speed and we'll go to the next reading. So the first part is just basically circus and what it is about, right? And why did we call it the greatest show on earth? We're going to read about that. Circus is a special kind of entertainment, entertainment, four syllables, entertainment, ment, for everybody of all ages, ages. There are performers and artists, that's a tough one. You have the artist, that's the easy one, but now when it's plural, you have the T-S-T, -T. Hmm. artist, you go back to that T, but now we don't say it. Artists. Artists. So performers and artists. Same like scientist. Scientists. Artists that may include acrobats, again, clowns, ns, trained animals, trapeze Musicians, this turns into a shh sound, and z, music, not music, music, musicians, tight rope walkers, jug, -g. this is not the d, jugglers, and other artists. 
Who performs stunts? Circuses, again, we've got that uh, E-S at the end. Often it turns into an I-Z sound. Circuses. Circuses today travel around or travel all over the world. They often perform in large tents called the big top, right? Big top tents. The ring is the circular area in the middle where the audience can watch, right? So remember, like, I think it was Matt said, uh, the arena, right? The arena is usually much bigger. The circle is what they're referring to from when they had the big top tents. The tent is usually circular, right? And then in the middle was the circle. And then around the circle is where the audience, the spectators, the viewer, well, viewers is usually watching TV, um, but more like spectators, audience, the people watching the show, right? So this is what they called the ring, where they performed their acts, did their show. The ringmaster manages the show. The ringmaster is the gentleman, usually with a big top hat and a long vest. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the greatest show on earth. And then a big elephant comes in and steps on him. And that's the end of his career. Something like that. Those guys are called the ringmaster. They let everybody know what's coming up, what's next, and, and what's going to happen. So, they're pretty cool. Now oh, I read it normal, okay. Oh, the curtain is coming back, watch. Magic. <laughs> See, just a little rusty, like my juggling. A circus is a special kind of entertainment for everybody of all ages. There are performers and artists that may include acrobats, clowns, trained animals, trapeze acts, musicians, tightrope walkers, jugglers, and other artists who perform stunts. Whew, I gotta put more punctuations in this. <sighs> Circuses today travel all over the world. They often perform in large tents called the Big Top. The, the ring is the circle, the circular area in the middle where the audience can watch. The ringmaster manages the show. <laughs> Curtains, please. There we go. Now we're back on track. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna talk a little bit about the acts. We went through a lot of the vocabulary to show you what they do. See, as you can see in the background, maybe vaguely, we have our, our Dumbo, the, the, uh, the elephant here again, and we got a dog doing skipping with the elephant and a horse trying to ride the elephant and pretty crazy stuff. Hmm. There are many acts in the circus. Some do gymnastics and even perform on trampolines. We didn't put trampoline in the vocabulary because there's just too much vocabulary. But trampoline, trampoline is fun too. And I remember them from school as well. And there are these big suspended mats that are spandexy. <laughs> they stretch, but you can jump on these. And you can jump very, very, very high and you can do somersaults and flips and fall on down, fall on them, and they're a lot of fun. They're just a lot, a lot of fun. As long as you don't jump off, because then in, that's not so much fun. Not so much fun. Some people walk on stilts, you know, those sticky thingy things, or ride on unicycles. You can always find clowns doing funny things to keep you entertained, and most of them are very skilled acrobats. Wild animals such as lions, tigers, bears, or even sea lions are often the main attractions. This is where things are changing a bit. They started in the Roman times. They re-emerged in more modern times, which is the next passage here. Um, but this is also what's happening now. Although the popularity, the popularity, it's not on Facebook so much anymore. 
the popularity of the circus has dropped. Many people think that it is cruel to make these wild animals do tricks and keep them in cages. Many countries now do not want to see animals in circuses. So, despite it being one of the greatest shows on earth for a very, very long time, nowadays, nowadays, right, these days, recently, a lot of countries are banning. Banning means forbidding, stopping uh, companies to bring these animals in and have them do their shows. So a lot more animal rights groups and activists, things like that. So it is changing a lot. Last one, the history. Okay, so again, just a quick bit on the history. And that first circus that I talked about earliest, earlier um, was in a place, right? It's, again, I couldn't get it. I could get pictures of the ruins, the old rocks and things that are there now, but it didn't justify it. So I couldn't get a drawing of the real place. And the place was called the Circus Maximus. And it was in the sixth century. Um, it was the very first circus and it started in ancient Rome during er, showing at that time they started entertaining people with chariot races, horse shows, staged battles, uh, acts with animals, jugglers, acrobats. After that it seemed like it kind of disappeared for a bit. I'm sure the circus still went on and they still did circuses all over the world, or especially in at that time, would have been um, Europe and places like that, the Middle East. Um, but you didn't hear much about it, and it really didn't come back what, fruition, I guess. It didn't really come back to life until in 1768, the more modern Royal Circus was built in London by John Hughes. So it became, it started becoming very popular. He was very successful um, when he opened up another circus in London. So that's quite a gap. You know, we're talking about the sixth century. So that's like the 500s. And then you don't hear much about it until the 18th century. So you're looking at 1,200 years or 1,200 years of a gap where there's not much history about the circus. So anyhow, approximately 230 years ago, it came back. And this is where we started having it in modern cities and everything changed again. So, seven, or, sorry, 18, 1768. Not long off after that, in 1793, the first circus appeared in the USA, the United States of America in Philadelphia. Philadelphia is on the East Coast. It's very close to New York and, and Washington and the White House. And it was an Englishman as well who brought it there. John Bill Ricketts. Ricketts? Pickets? Ricketts. Uh, who started it. Circuses had become popular in many countries all over the world. Now remember I was talking about uh, that first picture. Barnum and Bailey greatest show on earth toured from 1879 to 1902 after that the company became ring ringlings was it again ring ringlings and brothers ringling brothers you can see the picture after again um, and it kept going and they just recently I, I watched yesterday the final show of this company and it ended in 2017 so, more than 100 years, 120 years, that this, where it started, Barnum and Bailey, and it was called The Greatest Show on Earth, toured. And they've been doing that for over 100 years, this family. Um, and also, something that's really worthy of noting is that in Russia, back in, oh, I think it was like 1919, when Lenin was the, the leader in Russia, then called the USSR, 
he was such a fan of circuses that he thought it should be as glorious as ballet and, and, and therefore he made sure that they built a special school called the Moscow Circus School and it started in 1927 and still today it is one of the best circuses in the world and uh, lots of famous performers, acrobats studied in this school or came from this school. All right, so we'll read this at more of a normal speed again. The Circus Maximus in the 6th century was the very first circus, and it started in ancient Rome showing chariot races. Remember, those are the ones with the, the booths behind the horses. Um, the ho horse shows, staged battles, Roman fights, uh, lots of tigers and lions, of course, with the, the arenas they had, jugglers, acrobats. This is where it all started. It disappeared for many years after the fall of the Roman Empire. And again, the whole Roman Empire is another story for another day, and I can't wait to give you some more history. In 1768, now you can say the year 1768, no problem. Or you could just say 1768. It's a lot easier. The first circus appeared. Another little. Oh. 1768, the more, more modern Royal Circus was built in London by John Hughes. In 1793, so we're talking what now, 70, 80, 25 years later, the first circus appeared in the United States of America in Philadelphia, and it's, or it, it's was, <laughs> it's was, <laughs> it was, Englishman John Bill Ricketts, who started it. Circuses had become popular now in many, many countries all over the world. Um, and again, one of the ones who made it so famous was this very big circus company, the Barnum and Bailey Greatest Show on Earth, toured from 1870, 1897 to 1902. And they made the circus famous. Moscow also helped to make circus performance famous uh, with their circus school, which started in 1927 and again, still operates today. So it's still one of the best circuses in the world. So they do both. They train and they perform circus. All right. So that's our reading. That's about the circus acts, how it started and all the vocab about circuses and most importantly, popcorn. Questions and answers, right? So we've got a really fancy, fancy big top here. It looks like quite the facility. This is probably one of these schools. Mm, who knows? Okay. Let's see what our first question is. Let's see if we got anybody answering it. Okay, now I know this is the Colosseum. Okay, this is not where it started, but just outside of this, there's an area where there's a few hills and it used to be where all the, the rich and the emperor and all the important people lived. And amongst those hills is where they built, it was actually a chariot racing complex. And it was very long, so chariot races could go on there. And that's where they started doing circuses. So where did the first circus start? I already told you Rome, and it's not the Colosseum. There were, I'm sure, plenty of circuses in the Colosseum after that. Max again in Helena. Yeah, what was it called? I gave you guys the name of the very first circus. And it was where they did all those chariot races. And that's when they started bringing in the animals and, and doing horse shows and all kinds of other entertainment. Very similar to the Colosseum. Mind you, it's a lot shorter, but very long. It could sit somewhere as like 150,000 people. One report said it had been rebuilt many times, rebuilt, that at one point it could hold 250,000 people. That's a lot of people. And again, this is 1,500 years ago. That's a long time ago. It's pretty amazing. Rome is in Italy. This is true. 
This is true. But what was the name of the first circus? Started with an M. Nobody got it, huh? Okay. Circus Maximus in Rome, Italy. Okay. So it's a little bit different of a layout, but like I said, we couldn't we couldn't find the proper a proper picture for it or drawing. I guess there, you wouldn't have a picture of this place in its time, but uh, there were some really good drawings and animations. Okay, so that's it. Circus Maximus is where it all started. All right, so after that, we didn't hear much about the circus. Where and when did the first modern circus begin? All right, this is what we're more used to seeing now. No, we don't see chariot races anymore. And we don't see tigers and lions fighting against gladiators anymore. But modern circus, where did it first start and when? Yeah, London. Anybody remember the name of the year? Or what century even? Since we talked about century, centuries last week. Now, it was in the 18th century. No? Okay. What do we got? London when? London. Began in London, England in 1768. All right. So we just talked about this. What did the Barnum and Bailey Greatest Show on Earth do for the circus? What did it do? for the circus. How did it change things? How did it get from being a little tent at a festival to all of a sudden a filled stadium with shows and lights and multiple elephants and all kinds of acts and performers and and this is an arena. It looks like a hockey arena. Now, I'm pretty sure it probably is a hockey arena. So what did they do? What did Barnum and Bailey do to or for the circus or the circus industry? Industry. <laughs> All right. They made the circus famous. If it wasn't for these big touring companies, um, it probably wouldn't be as famous as it is, or it was. I guess it's not as, as famous now, but it certainly was very famous over the last few couple of hundred years. By the way, Matt just asked, is it the Pirates, correct? Ah, it like you're you know it does look like a parade, doesn't it? You've got all these people marching in here, and you've got animals in here. Now remember, a parade parade is usually different groups of people, animals, floats for cars, dressed up carnival-like shows and bands and jugglers, all kinds of different performers going down the street, usually going down a street through a city, having some kind of a, a festival time or something like that, like Mardi Gras. Um, a parade is something you go to watch as they go down the streets. A circus is something you either go into a big top tent or you go into an arena like this and then they do all the animal tricks and acrobats and trapeze. It would be hard to do the trapeze swinging on the ropes and stuff when you're driving down the street. They wouldn't be too safe. So they're a little different, but you're right. In this picture, it almost looks like they're going on a parade. If they went out the door and down the street, maybe it would be a parade. But good guess. But parade and circus are a bit different. And quite a bit different. All right, what's the next question here? See if someone can get one. I made these questions so easy for you. Who and what perform, perform in a circus? Everything's here. Who and what perform in a circus? And you got people swinging up on ropes and you got parrots riding tricycles, you've got dancing horses and dancing elephants, juggling clowns, so what do we call them? One of the words. 
Kerang. <laughs> yeah, but 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 can. <laughs> no. What do we call these performers? Especially like this one. Artists and animals. Artists and animals, okay. But there's another word I'm looking for. I think it was the second vocab we had today. Second vocabulary. Now they take quite pride and prop. <laughs> they take quite pride in saying, I am an what? Okay. Acrobats. What were they? Acrobats, gymnasts, and of course the animals, yeah? These are who and what performs in the circuses. I was looking for acrobats, right? All right, next one. Who, ma <laughs> I just gave you the answer. Who manages the show and, perform uh, and the performers in the ring? Ladies and gentlemen, who's that? It's not Trevor. I know you know. I know you. I just gave you the answer. Ken, I know you got it. It's not the clown. And it's not the animals. Ringmaster. Ringmaster. Yeah, this, this guy here. He's kind of like the host of the show. The ringmaster. <laughs> All right. All right. One more left or is that the last one? Ah, yeah, this is how, where, where we're at today. Why are circuses not as popular as before? Why is it? What's happening around the world now and in, in many countries regarding circuses and animals, of course? An amazing world, it's constantly changing. Things we, we did and didn't do when, when I was a teenager, all changed when I got in my 20s. And then all changed again in my 30s. And now it's all changing again. The world is just constantly changing. How people think, what people do, how we do things. Why are circuses not as popular anymore? Because some people believe it is unfair to the animals or cruel, right? So this is what's happening in a lot of countries now. Um, nowadays, these days, a lot of people are more involved in animal rights and things like this. Um, and they don't want to see these wild animals being kept in cages and traveling around because when they're done performing, they can't let them go back into the wild, they have to um, dispose of them. So it's, uh, it's not a good business for the animals, to say the least. I also read this week in our research that whales, and the UK whales for sure, um, have now officially cancelled, or not renewable, you can't get a circus license anymore for the animals and stuff like this. Um, so basically, whoever has a license, when it expires, that's the end. Um, Barnum and uh, Ringlings, the Barnum and Bailey's company, the greatest show on earth, was at some point. Uh, they've closed permanently in 2017. Costa Rica, and I can't remember, there was, there's a whole list of countries now where um, they've banned circuses with, uh, with animals. So it is, again, the world is changing all the time. Um, it looks like the future of circuses with animals and shows like this for many countries is uh, not going to happen. So it less and less likely you'll see one in your children, probably pretty unlikely that they will see some of the circuses that you see on video. So with that being said, that's our presentation for The greatest show on earth, or was, and I'm not talking about the Rams. All right, so New Way English is our website, .tv. Uh, so thank you for watching. Mm -hmm, by the way, uh, Muhammad, hello. Uh, 
Hello, teacher. Sorry for coming late. Mohammed. Hello, Mohammed from Indonesia. And again, thank all of you. So, if you like what we're doing, don't forget to hit that like button and smash that subscribe. That's what they keep telling me to tell you. And I want to thank all of the new viewers that we got from uh, Taiwan, Russia, Korea, South Korea, and Japan. And special thanks to all of those of you who have been watching us from Indonesia and Vietnam, Thailand, India now. We've got a few people watching from there. Um, Malaysia, Cambodia, and Mongolia as well, yeah? Some more goodbyes. Coco. Coco. Huh. Coco. Where were you? Were you? Same, same as me. Also late. Just came. Just, just joined. Coco, Coco. Unbelievable. All right, Coco, Mohammed, everybody. Ken, thank you for coming. And we'll see you next week. As always, invest in yourself. Good night. <laughs>